So basically, um, our current understanding and throughout matter that throughout time, sorry, that changes because as we understand things more, we probe things deeper, and what we think is fundamental gets smaller and smaller. But currently, um, most of the things around us are made up of um, what's known as quarks and um, uh, and electrons, uh, and, and they make up the atoms and the molecules that are around us. And but there are also some other fundamental particles that are like them, but they're more massive. Um, so they actually decay quite quickly. Um, and we also have um, what, uh, mysterious particles known as neutrinos. Um, and we also have particles that mediate the forces between the um, matter particles. So we have the photon, which is, the, um, I guess, the, 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 the sort of best known one, um, which is the electromagnetic force. We have a gluon for the strong force, which is responsible for binding nuclei together. Um, and we have um, W and Z bosons, which are very massive particles, which are responsible for weak nuclear decay. And so we have this, um, all of these particles and all of these interactions between them. Uh, this is all described by what's known as the standard model of particle physics. Um, and it's a very successful mathematical theory, um, but it has a missing piece, which is um, a, a particle known as the Higgs boson, which is predicted to exist. Uh, without it, the theory doesn't really work, and the particles don't have any mass. So, um, yeah, we expect that if the standard model is correct, then that should be there, and we're looking for it. So how are you investigating all this at the LHC? So at the LHC, we um, try to um, uh, basically um, s study the standard model, try and scrutinise it, look for particles like the Higgs boson, um, by smashing together um, protons at very high um, energy. So they go in circles around a ring, uh, and you accelerate them very fast, they collide together, and they create a whole load of new particles. And if you've got lots of energy, it's possible to create massive particles. Um, and so um, one of possibility is that you can create Higgs bosons in, 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 at the LHC, and we surround um, the, the interaction points for wh where the protons um, interact with big particle detectors. So the protons interact with each other, they break up, they produce a load of other particles, um, if a Higgs boson was produced, it actually would decay very quickly and it would, it would de the decay products themselves would, would, would be detected. They move through the detector and they leave a trace. They interact with the, the material in the detector and they leave a trace. And that allows us to, um, to study, study these particles and, and, and infer what has occurred. Why collide protons particularly? Because they're made up, is it two up, one down quark? So why use protons particularly? So um, basically what we need, we need when, when you're accelerating these particles around these, this ring, you need charged particles because you use magnetic fields to bend them um, and you need to keep, and, and, you, and you use um, electric waves to accelerate them. And you also want the particles to be stable um, because otherwise they decay and that would uh, be a bit of a pain. Um, so, really, you have um, um, protons, um, or you could also have uh, sort of uh, a, a nuclei with, with more protons and, and so on, but really you have protons and electrons, and they're antiparticle um, positrons, which you could collide. And you could do either. So, the advantage, actually, of, of, of protons um, over electrons is that they, when, when electrons go around, they, they actually radiate more energy, and it takes, it takes sort of more input energy to keep them going. So, the advantage of protons is that you have to, that they radiate less, and the reason is because they have got more mass. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's why we would have protons. But actually having protons makes our lives um, a little bit more, more complicated because they're not fundamental particles. They're made up of um, the, these quarks that you talked about, and also the gluons, which are the interactions between the quarks. Um, and so when you collide particles together at a certain centre of mass energy, if you collide the protons together, you actually have less energy available to make new particles than if you were to collide an electron and a positron, it's antiparticle together. And the reason is, is because it's actually the fundamental quarks and gluons that are, have, that are um, part of the interaction, and they only each carry a fraction of the proton momentum. So you actually need more energy in, in terms of creating a certain amount of, um, a certain type of particle. But we use protons because the sort of radiation of, of the, um, from the electrons sort of out, you know, is worse than, than this trade-off sort of thing. And how do you actually produce the protons that you use? So they are produced um, from hydrogen atoms, basically. So a hydrogen atom is a proton and an electron, and you, you strip off the electron, and then you get these protons, which you then put into the beam. How do you actually detect what's going on once you've spun the proton beams round and round and then they come to this detector? How do you actually detect what's going on when they collide into each other? 
So we, we surround the, the collision point. So that the, the protons usually go around avoiding each other, the two beams, and then at certain points they're focused onto each other. And these points are surrounded by particle detectors. And they, are, they, they have um, sort of layers of different types of um, material. The particles move through. And so one example of, of, of how we detect them is, is um, one of the types of detectors is called a tracking detector. It, surround, it sort of surrounds where the, the protons um, collide. Um, charged particles will um, move through this tracking detector, and it's immersed in an, a magnetic field. And so charged particles in a magnetic field will bend, and so they, they bend through, and they leave a hit at each point that they move through the detector, and you sort of literally draw a line where they've gone. And the more that they bend, um, that then you know the lower the momentum because actually the momentum's um, proportional to the, the radius of the curvature that they, that they bend in. So it allows us to detect that they were there to measure their momentum as well. And, so there's, and there's lots of other parts of the detector as well that we use. And what is the project that you're working on actually looking for? Um, so, uh, so in, in fact, what I'm specifically working on is trying to... Um, I'm not actually look, um, working on a search for the Higgs but I'm trying to understand the, what we call the background to, it, to a Higgs. So when a Higgs um, is produced, or if the Higgs exists, which we don't know yet, um, if a Higgs is produced, it, the rate of that happening when the protons interact is much, much lower than the rate of, of um, something else happening. So the, the, pro, the, the, pro, the, the rate of particles being produced that we understand well is, is much, much higher. Um, so really orders of magnitude higher. So most of the time when protons interact, they produce something that you might think is boring because we already know it, uh, and it's much rarer that you get something like a Higgs produced. So I'm working on really trying to understand these um, more common processes so that we can make sure if we see something like a Higgs or something else, that we've understood what it's sitting on top of so we can really claim that, that we understand it's something new.